We want to see your power flow and to be refreshed in your presence. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> 
I did force you to play the bell. It's good for you to serve. Ghost peppers. Ghost peppers? No, then I'd rub it in my eye and then... Shelly's got a Ghost peppers. peppers. So sometimes we get angry. Does anybody ever get angry? Does anybody ever get mad? Does anybody ever get mad? Pay attention to me. I'm doing this here. <laughs> so sometimes we get, look at boys, look at, sometimes we get mad. Watch out. Scarlet, Scarlet, move back because I don't want to get you dressed pretty. Or pretty full of. So sometimes we get mad. Any hot heads out there? None. You could just. Me and Steve and Denise are the only truthful people in this whole congregation. <laughs> So sometimes we get angry. You know how some people get angry? This is how I get angry. Some people get angry like this. I'm not going to talk to you for a month. You made me mad last December. You know, there's people like that, too. So, this is a mess, isn't it? Look at Our lives are a mess. They're a mess. Isn't that gross? So, we need to give now did the Holy Spirit go anywhere? Holy Spirit was still in there, right? So the Spirit of God was still in there, right? So we need to get more filling of the Spirit of God. So, and push out the bad stuff. So how do we do that? How do we get more Spirit of God? What's one way we can get closer to God? Be good. What's another way? Go to church. Go to church? What's another way? Yeah, church. What's this? What am I doing? Praying. Very good. So when we get more of God's spirit, look what happens. It's, it's bigger, bigger. I don't have enough water, but if I did, it would be clear. Who we'll get more water? Yes. In the... I didn't this have enough water. This you water bottle. Dad is coffee, and I'm not wasting. <laughs> <laughs> so if if I had more water, so this person needs a little bit more Holy Spirit. Do you ever know that person that needs a little bit more Holy Spirit? They're just always grumpy. They're always a curmudgeon. I know. So let's pray. And then are we keeping them upstairs until after the skit? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so let's pray. And then you guys are going to go back to your... You're going to go back to your... That does stink. You're going to go back to your um, place where you were sitting. And then you go downstairs. So let's pray. Hands together. Here we go. Ready? Where are your hands? You lost your arms. Okay, there. That's a good place. Lord, we thank you for these kiddos. We ask a blessing on them. And may they know that they have the power of God in them. And may they use it. In the name of Christ. Amen. All right, so go back where you came from. Goodbye. Oh, wait. I got a treat. And apparently, we're getting, we're getting, wreaking havoc from the parents who want healthy. I won't say who those are. So, we got counter bars, or <laughs> apparently this is supposed to be healthy, peanut butter chocolate. So, who, who wants, I, I don't know, do you guys want, which one do you want? It's all got peanut butter, and hopefully it'll be solid. Not a problem. See, they don't, they don't, they're tempted to take a good hand. Do you want something? Get that together, will you? I like it. You want something? You get one of those. She wants a nutty bar. Hey, Ruby, give me that nutty bar. Hey, Hadley, you want to train me? Look at how two for one. Can I have this? Can I have this? Thank you. Okay, bye. You can have both those. Yep, those are yours. You don't want those? Okay. You're going to share with Ruby? Okay, good. All right. You're welcome. All the lepers are only one thing I have to say. Thank you.
Okay, guys, let's wrap up our lesson with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yes. Uh, don't interrupt me, I'm praying. <clears throat> but you called me. Uh, called you? I didn't call you. I was praying. Start again here. Our Father, who art in heaven. There. You did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father, who art in heaven. Here I am. What's on your mind? But I didn't mean anything by it. I was, you know, um, I was just saying my part of the prayer with my small group. I always am in the lead during the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good. All right. Go on. Well, actually, I'm done now. Stacy's going to say the next part. <laughs> okay, everyone, let's, let's continue. Hallowed be thy name. Hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It, it means, uh, good grief. How should I know what it means? It's just part of the prayer. By the way, what does it mean? It means honored, <laughs> holy, wonderful. Oh, okay, that makes sense. I never really thought about what hallowed meant before. Thanks. I'm going to keep going now, guys. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't I mean it? What are you going to do about it? Do? Nothing, I suppose. I just think it would be rather good if you got control of things down here like you have up there. Have I got control of you? Uh, uh, well, go to church. That isn't what I asked you. What about that bad timbre? You've really got a problem there, you know. Stop picking on me. I'm just as good as some of those hypocrites down at the church. Excuse me? But I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is the habit, it will have to start with the ones who are praying for it. Like you, for example. Okay, all right. I, I guess I do have a few hang-ups. Now that you mention it, I probably could name some others. So could I. Well, I haven't thought about it much until now, but I really would like to get rid of some of those bad things. I think I would be able to feel a little more free. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together, you and I. Some real victories can be won. I'm proud of you. Look, Lord, this is Tony. I am ready to finish this up here. This is taking a long, longer than it usually does. Okay, guys, let's pray. Let this be our daily bread. And you need to cut out the bread. You're a little overweight as it is. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What is this? Here I am doing my religious duty, and all of a sudden, you break in and remind me of all my faults. Praying is a dangerous thing. You could end up changed, you know. That's what I'm trying to bring across to you. You called me, and here I am. It's too late to stop now. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. Well, go on. I am scared for two. Scared what? I know what you'll say. Try me and see. I am going to just pass on saying any more <laughs> of the prayer. Well, guys, let's see if we can finish this up. Are you ready? Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. What about Peter Brown? See, I knew it. <laughs> I knew you would bring him up. My Lord, he told lies about me and he cheated me out of some money. I swear I'll get even with him. But your prayer. I didn't, your mean prayer. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. But it's not much fun carrying around that little bitterness inside, is it? No, but I'll feel better as soon as I get even. <laughs> Have I got some plans for old Peter? You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think of how unhappy you really are. But I'll change all of that. You will? Forgive Peter. 
and then I'll forgive you. Then the hate and sin will be Peter's problem and not yours. You may lose the money, but you will have settled your heart. Uh, it doesn't sound easy, but deep down, I know it would be worth the effort. Thank you, Lord, for helping me work through this. I think it's time for us to finally finish this. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. So, it's not in the original manuscripts of the gospel in Luke and in Matthew, because that's where we find Jesus saying, pray like this. He said it in Matthew, and then he said it again in Luke. Pray like this, this way, okay? So, 
Theologians for centuries have been arguing whether this for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory should be in the Lord's Prayer at all. Because they can't find it in the original gospel manuscripts. Right? I just proved that. Right? However, in the Didache, I know, isn't that a cool word? Didache for all you trivia fans out there. Didache was a first century in, uh, religious writing. First century. Okay, so the first hundred years... After the death of Christ and the resurrection, the Didache was written by probably someone who followed the apostles, and they added, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, onto the end of Jesus' teaching. And so, I think that's kind of cool, and I think it should be in there. However, this is still up for debate. Every time I do a graveside service, I will do the Lord's Prayer at the end, and I'll ask people to join me, say, if you know the Lord's Prayer, join with me. And then I'll end it, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And, and, you know, like a quarter of the people are saying it, some are not. And so after one graveside service, a man came up to me and he said, Hey, when did they change the Lord's Prayer? Now, I knew exactly what he was talking about, because I knew he was talking about that last verse. And I said, well, I'm a Protestant, so he was Catholic, and a lot of Catholics do not say the end of this, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Um, because it's not in the manuscripts, but it is in the Didache, which is also known as the teaching of the apostles to the nation. So in my opinion, probably someone who knew the apostles added this. And you know what is so cool about it is that this is a doxology. A doxology. And do you know what a doxology means? What the actual term means? Study of praise or expression of praise. So that's what the doxology is. So at the end of a worship service... We've sang some things over, over and over again, which is like a doxology. At the end of a prayer, this is for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. That is a doxology, an expression of praise to God. So what a doxology does is it wraps up everything that you have just said, everything you've just prayed, everything you just sang, every, every worship piece that was involved, even the spreading of the smelly stuff. At the end, there's a doxology which wraps it all up and gives praise to God. So the Lord's Prayer starts with praising God, and so I think it should be added, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Now you guys have heard this, right? You've heard this because you're Protestants, most of you, and you've heard it over and over and over again. That's the way you were taught it. Have you ever run into someone who said, why is that in there? Or have they stopped saying the Lord's Prayer at that point? Don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then there's silence, and you're like, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And blah, blah, blah. Right? You ever run into that? So did you know that? So it's a doxology. I think that's really cool. I think that's amazing information. Because praising God is how we start the Lord's Prayer, and that's how we should end the Lord's Prayer. We start the Lord's Prayer, our Father who is in heaven. Our Father who's holy and separate from us. Our Father who is holy and spiritual majesty and splendor and the goodness of God. And then we say, and thank you, Lord, for letting us pray our Father, because you let us into that relationship with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And that's why God should be praised. God is worthy of praise. Someone who knew all about the power of praise was King David. And that's why he prayed the prayer, the ending of the prayer, the doxology of the prayer that Shelley read for us in First Chronicles. Before I go into that again, because I want to point out some features of it, Here's the back story. King David is old, okay? He's probably my age back then, which is old. <laughs> and he's already heard from God. God has said, you're not going to build the temple. Who builds the first temple of God? Say it. Solomon. Solomon does. And it was glorious, wasn't it? It was full of gold and silver and bronze and tons and tons and tons of precious metals. So... David knows he's not going to build the temple, but he wants to encourage the people to buy into his son building it, okay? It's like when one leader leaves and the other leader comes. So you know what David does? He gathers together, not the people of God, but the leadership of God. The leadership of God. So if you're a leader in this church, listen up. The leadership of God. And he says to them, donate whatever precious metals you want to donate. Donate whatever you think is worthy of the Holy One of God. Tithing, leaders. Hopefully you're tithing. I don't know. I don't look. So they do. And they bring tons and tons of silver.
silver and gold and bronze. And guess what the people of Israel do because of what the leadership did? They brought tons and tons of silver and gold and bronze. And so David then says this amazing prayer. Now, they're not going to build this temple until a little bit later. He says this amazing prayer. And this is what he ends with. First Chronicles 29, 10, and 11. Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. For everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Yours, Lord, is the glory. Yours, Lord, is the power. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. <laughs> it's the end of David's prayer, praising God for what the leadership and the people of God have done to show that God is worthy of praise. You are showing that God is worthy of praise by being here today. David knew the power of praising God. He knew the power of praising God and giving thanks to God for who he is. It's all about praising God. One theologian said, praise is the language of faith. Praise is the language of faith. So every time you say the Lord's Prayer, especially the beginning and the ending, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, you're praising God. And you're not going to say God is great and God is glory and God is splendor and God is all power and God is sovereign and God is the authority and he makes everything and everything he makes belongs to him unless you have faith in him, right? Otherwise, you're just talking. Or maybe you just talk the Lord's Prayer and you memorize it and you say, hey, whatever. Remember, we're going to talk about this. You're asking, you're asking God for his name to be hallowed. You're asking God for his will to be done. Just like in our skit. God says, how are you going to do it? God breaks in. You've got an anger problem. How are you going to get rid of it? You need some more spirit. Because you still, you still got a little red in there, right? Like I showed you today. So, praise is important. It is who God is, and we acknowledge it. It shows our faith. So every time we praise God, we are showing the world that he's worthy to be praised. Every time we show up to worship, which means the old Anglican word, worthy. Worship means worthy of praise. Everything you do in a worship service, you are honoring and showing praise to God. Every time you sing, and everything you do that isn't worthy of praise, like gossip or, my gosh, when's this pastor going to hurry up? I only got two more pages, so relax. Right? you got to show God honor and praise. And David knew, as I said, the power of praise. Because in a worshiping congregation, when we get together and we sing and we pray and we share our stories and we chat with each other because we miss each other and we're checking in on how everybody's doing, there is a little bit more apparent presence of God in the room. Amen? God is more apparent in a worshiping congregation than just you worshiping by yourself out in the woods, which is a good place to worship too. But in the power of the people gathered together, like the assembly that was gathered together that gave everything they had, all their precious metals, everything. I'm sure all the houses were empty of all the gold and all the bronze and all this. That'd be like cleaning out your 401k and giving it to the church. Anybody do that yet? <laughs> I don't have to start because I'm one of the leaders, right? That's not what they're asking. But isn't that amazing? The presence of God is more powerful at a church. When I went up to annual conference, there was about 1,600 of us. And when we sing the the hymns here, they sound good. It's a good thing. But when you have 1,600 people singing them, it's powerful. It's a powerful thing. And so God is worthy to be praised. Listen to um, Psalm 22. Ben said I hear the wrong psalm. Thank you. Yet you are holy, the psalmist writes, enthroned on the praises of Israel. If we want to show the world that God's in charge and not our government, if we want to show the world that God's in charge and not our bank account, if we want to show the world that God is all-powerful and everything he has belongs to him, we praise him. And we enthrone him for who he is, God, the Holy One. 
So when we praise God, his very presence is with us. It has to be. We're asking him to be honored and glorified. And in the spirit of God, he's here. And where the spirit of God is, so is his glory. So every time we live out the Lord's Prayer, when we live it out loud, like the skit was all about, every time we hallow God's name, every time we choose to show God respect, others will respect God. If we choose not to show God respect, others won't respect God, right? It's as simple as that. If we want God's name to be hallowed, which means to be holy and full of praise, we show up to church. Because we say in our body language here, sitting here, that God is worthy to be praised. And that follows his name. Right? And then we live out the Lord's Prayer. When we choose God's way over our own way, when we choose to do what God wants us to do, even though we know it's comfortable and we don't want to go outside our comfort zone, every time we choose to do that and the kingdom of heaven breaks through, it cracks through the darkness of the world, every time we do that, we live out the Lord's Prayer. And we live out the Lord's Prayer loud because it's not a prayer just to be memorized. When we're satisfied with what God has provided and not consumed with what everybody else has, isn't it so easy to get consumed with what everybody else has? Well, you don't know if the guy who's got the 4x4 four four and the boat and the camper and the big house and all that isn't in debt up to his eyeballs or even past his eyeballs. We don't know that. And we know the Bible says, live as debt-free as you can. Every time we choose to be satisfied with what God has given us, we live out the Lord's Prayer. When we choose to forgive, because remember we talked about forgive us our debts as we forgive those of their debts against us. Every time we choose to forgive, we show the world that God's given us freedom from our debt. Because remember, our debt was too high to pay. We couldn't get out of the debt of sin. And only a Savior could do that. So every time we choose to forgive, we're actually pointing to the cross. Did you know that? But when we choose to hold a grudge, when we choose to be full of bitterness and angry at every little thing because we haven't forgiven that person, guess what? Your life ain't going to go so good. When we choose not to forgive, does God forgive? Remember we talked about that? God has given us everything. We choose to forgive because of the debt he paid for us. And every time we do that, every time we choose to forgive, we live out the Lord's Prayer. And when we ask God and we beg God to show us the exit door in the midst of a temptation, whatever it is, to lash out at that person, they deserve it. Just like Diane's part of the skip. Well, I am, I am. After some revenge on Peter Brown, whoever he is. Right? Every time we choose to say, Lord, show me a way out of this. And we go that way. We live out the Lord's prayer. And that brings God glory. Because God is glory, right? God is worthy to be praised. It's who he is. It's an attribute of him. That's who God is. But you can also attribute glory to God by living out the Lord's prayer. Not just memorizing it, not just saying it when you go to bed, but actually living it out. The Apostle Paul confirms this in 1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all for the praise of God. So don't just memorize the Lord's Prayer. Live it out. And not because I said so. But because for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the skit. It just kind of wrapped up the Lord's Prayer series. And it's so wonderful to look at that prayer again that we pray every single Sunday. We pray it every Sunday. It has power because we're asking you. We're asking you to do something and you take us up on that offer. You say, fine, I'll do it through you. So thank you for teaching us that for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory is praise and tribute to you for who you are. May our lives reflect it. In Jesus' name, amen. I told you that was a short sign. In and out. Right? Lord's Prayer done, moving on. We're going to do something else. I don't know what it's called, but what is it, Jill?
I don't even remember what we're doing next. She knows. If you want to see her, ask her. Um, so now we're going to do prayers. So remember to write down your prayers online so that we can um, add them to our prayer chain. So what do we have to pray about? How about uh, Marsha and Paul telling us just a smidge about the curbside free food giveaway? Okay, stand up and say something. <laughs> Do you want to come up here and say something? No, no, no she does not. <laughs> okay, we had a successful curbside food giveaway this weekend. Um, first time. First time. Uh, we served 62 families. Um, we um, served 62 families and 195 served. Woohoo! Yes! It was a little overwhelming at first because they were lining up the door. Uh, I mean, it was amazing. Lining up and um, at three o'clock, two thirty actually. So, but we we got it done. I had uh, there was nine of us volunteers. And Yay! Thank you, volunteers. Friday and Saturday morning, everybody did a wonderful job, and we couldn't have done that with all the volunteers there because it was um, an undertaking, but it was moving too because people were so appreciative, and uh, we were able to. Not so much on Friday because it was really busy, but once it started slowing down, we were able to take a pause and um, share with the people the, um, the opportunities here at our church oh, um, about our the coming up family um, <coughs> fun night at the park. Um, Donna was able to share quite a bit on Saturday with people about our community meals and more of what goes on to the church. So it was definitely an outreach and. Uh, People who didn't know we were here, so it was just a really wonderful, moving project. So thank you, everybody. Yay! And uh, Nicole said one of her friends put on Snapchat, which some of you probably don't even have a clue as to what that is. But it's like a picture; it's there, and then it goes away. And they said, "Hey, hey, come down." I think it was your grandson. And um, he said, hey, I don't know if you know, but the Methodist Church is giving away food. It doesn't matter who you are, come by and stop by. The kid's 22. Pretty good. Yeah. Is that going to happen every month? Heck no. <laughs> Heck no, but I think we'll maybe make it annual. I'm not sure. Paul. No, but we still have plenty of food. So yes. Our regular food pantry hours will continue just as they were, and we have still have plenty of food to give away. So. Yep. Wednesdays and Fridays, Wednesdays 9 to noon. And, Fridays, and anytime by <laughs> 9 to noon. There's a table in the back down there with some peanut butter that should have the expiration date. Or sell by Grab your peanut butter. Used by, there's nine cases down there if anybody does any baking or anything like that. Have it. Take it. All right. So thank you for that. Other prayers that we have. And we got plenty more peanut butter. Yeah. So that beef wasn't going real good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. The beef wasn't going. The canned meat wasn't going. So Donna cooked some up, added some salt, and said, here you go. <laughs> if you want to know how to make chick or hummus out of the chickpeas, see Ellie. See, these ladies know how to cook. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Um, I just got my protein for healing. Yeah. Continue yeah. healing. Thank you. And it went well, so that's good. Bob. Answer for Jordan's got a place to live now, and he's got a job now. Good. So that was answered prayer for Jordan. Got a job and a place to live. That is good. Shelly. I'd ask for prayers for my daughter and husband. They are taking off tomorrow for a couple of weeks and driving out west to see the country and back. So just prayers for safe travels and their vehicle doesn't break down. Okay. So safe travels for your daughter and her husband as they travel. Wonderful. Steve. Uh, prayers of joy. My dad and I had an amazing trip on the honor flight out to D.C. and back. Yeah, so Steve and Orville yep. went yeah. and had a wonderful time on the honor flight. Yep. So and uh, just it was it was busy, there's a lot of people, so I'm just praying that uh, people stay healthy afterwards. Thank you. For prayers for healthy. Yeah. Kaiser is in the hospital. Yeah, Sharon Kaiser's in the hospital with pneumonia. I talked to her yesterday and um, she uh, she said they got to figure out how she got it. So there's going to be some tests. And when she said they're not pleasant, she's a nurse. And she knows what they are. So can she, What's that? She is watching. She is watching. Hey, Sharon, we love you. So um, her son's coming up today, Jim. So safe travel for him and, 
and praying for answers for her and how she got that. Jim. Uh, where is husband Steve that's going to have a procedure done on his jaw? Steve for a procedure yeah. on his jaw? Through the VA. Through the VA, okay? Just so that's Corey's husband, on. Steve. Okay. Steve. Steve Christensen. Definitely. Steve Christensen. Got it. Fred. I want prayers for my daughter. She didn't get here today. She fell. Linda fell? She cracked some ribs. And, oh. and, and Linda fell? So. Okay. Okay, so for Linda, for healing, for cracked ribs, apparently they don't do anything about that, but that's got to hurt. Yeah. Uh, my son was going to have a biopsy at U of M on Tuesday. Okay, this is David. 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 So David, for a biopsy on Tuesday, we pray it's not cancer. If it is, that they catch it early. They can get rid of it. Yes. Ukraine, our country, breaks a gas or anything. Our country, thank you. Jamie? Yes, we know your birthday party is in July, and I think it's going to be at the park again? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have that in the bulletin. Um, Jeff. Sorry. Uh, we got, um, it's Emma's sister. She's is Emma, and she's been diagnosed with a brain, um, with a tumor. It's cancer, we believe, so young thing. So we're just praying that it uh, comes back with a new treatment version. So just keep and Tasha. her first name again is? Tasha. Tasha. This is Emma's yeah. daughter. And isn't she? It's Emma's, it's Emma's sister. Emma's yeah. sister. And isn't she having a baby? She's having a baby. Too. She's having a baby, and she's a young thing, and they found out she's got a tumor. But we pray it's operable. Yeah. And they get it. Treatable. Yeah. Treatable, too. Yeah. So for um, Tasha. Yeah. Joanne. Lyle, who has shingles on the inside. We know how bad they are on the outside from Joyce, but the inside's got to even be more painful. So, and he's in his 90s, you said? Pray for Lyle. Melissa? Well, I've got to pay for the state um, because uh, the people that went to Mackinac from Detroit uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, they went to the island, they all got COVID. And then um, I hope that um, Gaylor did well with their fundraisers over the weekend for the. Um, uh, tornado. Oh, okay. So there was a fundraiser for Gaylord. I'm not sure how that turned out. Yeah. So praise that people gave. And then for the group that went up to Magna Island that have COVID, so they are <coughs> ill, so we want to continue to pray for them. Jan Nickerson had a prayer for, oh, I have them right here. Okay, good. Why well, do I wrote them down? Um, for Josh Smith, which is Jen and Troy's brother-in-law. He fell off a ladder while working. I don't know his, what's going on. Um, and then for Michelle, your daughter, uh, for prayers for provision and strength for her work that she does, her humanitarian effort. And also for a woman that she cares for who is, I think, on hospice for her and her daughter. Other prayers? Well, we got to praise. Larry's in the house. Yes, Larry's in the house. <laughs> He's waving. On Mac Island, the weekend for the 25th anniversary, so good time there and safe trip back. Okay, and who is that? Randy, Randy and Brenda. Oh, Randy and Brenda. Okay, good. And prayers. Zena. Uh, a praise and answered prayer. My brother and brother in law and sister are well. Oh, they have they, COVID too, they right? COVID. So they are doing better. Good. Jim. Joyce for healing and after pain is gone, where she fell on her rib. Oh, good. Okay. Finally, that weeks. Okay, <clears throat> so for continued healing, but her pain's gone. Thank you. Ellie? Uh, we have a prayer on Thanksgiving, I guess. Our granddaughter was the first runner-up in this. Delta Did she get first runner-up? Good for her. So that's wonderful. Yeah, hopefully she got some part of a scholarship. Yes. Good. And
And for all our graduates, we got a graduate in the house. So Nathan is here. Congratulations to him and to our teachers. They made it through graduation night. <laughs> yeah, barely went smooth. And for all our graduates, so if you can get to their open house, that'd be great. If you can't, send them a card, and they would prefer if you put some money in it. So we got that in from last week. Yes. Yeah, so Rob and I are taking a bunch of kids to Cedar Point tomorrow. Oh, so safe travel for you and Rob for Cedar Point. And Steve are on the way back to Tennessee, and Emily and Kyle are taking a bunch of kids to Washington D.C. So, so everybody's family. traveling. The Lynn family is traveling. So safe bubble for them, for Joe and Laura as they travel back. For my parents who are here, hey, mommy, daddy, they made it back. Um, anything else? Yeah, go ahead. just continue prayers for our youth. Thank you for our youth. Jamie? Um, I'm going to the dentist. Okay, the dentist. Yeah, you guys are getting a lot of teeth pulled. <laughs> toothbrush, toothpaste. <laughs> yep, that's right. Keep them clean. Okay. All right. All right, so Dale. Everybody pray for more rain. <laughs> and on that note, we will pray. Lord, thank you for being with us. And thank you for this Lord's Prayer series. It's been an eye-opener. So help us, Lord, through the power of your spirit to live the prayer out loud. That is the goal. That is why you said pray this way, not these specific words. Pray this pattern. May we hallow your name by putting you first and making sure our priorities are about you. And may we do your will even when it's hard. And may we serve even when it's difficult. And we thank you for this church that is a serving, giving church. It doesn't, that reputation in the community doesn't come easy. And because we have it, that means we are faithful. So I thank you for each person here and I ask a blessing on them. And Lord, we thank you for, again, teaching us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so we're going to say a prayer for our offering, and I think our grateful giving jar is new. Do we know what's going on? Oh, yeah, it's Wesley Ferris. So, you know, the Methodist Church has little mini churches in colleges around Michigan State. We have one up in Northern. We have one at Central. We have one at Ferris. And so because in our district, we're closest to Ferris, whatever you give goes to those kids in that ministry because they have to raise funds to pay for the, uh, their pastor. So let's say a prayer. God of love and peace, you created the vast universe and everything belongs to you. May your spirit inspire us to give generously, and may these gifts and offerings to support our church's mission of hope and assistance for people in our wider community. Amen. Please stand join us.
down for your snacks. So the big one is right after church, we need a bunch of men to help the Barry men. We have to get all of this off. Because next week is BBS. This place is going to look like Monumental Valley from Arizona. Yep. And so um, we need all this move, so we need some help with that. And of course, this Wednesday is our community dinner. It's going to be a Father Father Day uh, theme. And then, of course, Vacation Bible School is starting a week from Monday. And so we want to talk with Stacy about your supplies that we need for the... Yeah, and we're also going to have our parsonage meeting here. So we'll have the guys move the stuff. Uh, first, and then go grab some food, and then come upstairs. Will that work, Paul? Or what would you like to do? Me parsonage meeting, yeah, food, sure. parsonage, and then move the stuff. I'd like to just right straight into the parsonage meeting. Okay, so you don't get any food according to Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you know we are Methodist, right, Paul? So anyway, so again, that's the church house. We've gotten some updates, and so if you want to come and listen to what the trustees' recommendation will be for this or what their thoughts are behind it, stay after. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for reminding us that we have all the power we need to live out the Lord's Prayer. So help us to do it. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I'm done. We'll get